NASA and SpaceX have launched a four-person crew to the International Space Station in a reusable Dragon spacecraft atop a Falcon 9 rocket. The astronauts from four different countries lifted off from Florida. They'll shortly dock with the space station. One of their main tasks over their six-month stay is to determine whether microorganisms can survive and reproduce in space. Engineers pushed the launch back from Friday to review the capsule's safety and life support systems. Well, to get more on the mission, let's welcome Teresa Pulterova, a science and tech journalist based in London. Welcome to DW. So the astronauts will be approximately six months in space. So tell us more about the goal of this international mission to the ISS. Oh, well, I would say it's just like another NASA mission to the International Space Station. There is nothing, I would say, particularly different about this one from the previous ones. Uh, the space station has been kind of permanently accrued since 2000. Uh, so this is just another six-month rotation, keeping research uh, aboard the International Space Station uh, going. So the interesting thing, it's, it's a very international crew. There is a NASA astronaut uh, who is of Iranian origin. There is a Russian cosmonaut aboard. There is the European uh, astronaut Andreas Mogensen. Uh, and there is also a Japanese astronaut. So that's maybe interesting that it's a very international mix. Uh, and they will be conducting uh, all sorts of science and experiments uh, on board the space station during their six months in space. And as you mentioned, yeah, there is a mm. lot of research going on into, let's say, the physiological response of the human body uh, to the space conditions, to microgravity. Uh, but also they will be doing a lot of uh, research, taking samples of uh, biofilms inside right. the space station, also some samples of bacteria on the outside of the space station. And I understand that some of these samples will be brought back to Earth while uh, researchers will study them in the laboratory to understand what the space environment right. uh, does to, to, to these microbes. Well, tell us a little bit more about some of the health risks in space. What happens to the body during weightlessness? Yes, so our bodies have evolved on Earth where we have gravity. So every day as we just go about our normal lives, we need to somehow uh, act against this gravity. And for that, we have muscles and for that, we have bones. But in microgravity, we don't need them essentially. So what happens, uh, the kind of most known problems are that people start very quickly losing their muscle mass and their bone mass, their bone density. And for this reason, astronauts in space need to have like very uh, like rigorous um, workout protocols. They have to exercise every day to try to uh, act against this muscles, but still they lose quite a lot of muscle. They lose quite a lot of bone. So that's the biggest problem. Uh, then uh, obviously there are various kind of changes to the brain right. because you're you're in a different sort of you don't your brain doesn't know where it's up, where it's down because there is no up and down. Uh, mm. There are changes to vision in some astronauts. There are changes to their immune system. So, yeah, definitely space, it's not a very human-friendly environment. And it takes quite a while for those astronauts when they return to recover back right. to their sort of like normal normal level. It certainly doesn't sound like a, a very uh, healthy place. <laughs> anyway, Teresa Pulterova, uh, science and tech journalist in London. Thanks for joining us on DW. Thank you. Well, as we heard, part of the mission's goal is to examine the range of health hazards astronauts face. It's hoped it can shed light on the hit their immune systems take, which has remained a mystery until now. Space travel challenges human health on many levels. The immune system also takes a hit. Some astronauts on longer missions to the ISS develop persistent skin rashes, for example. Many appear more susceptible to infections like colds or coughs. It's hard to tell exactly what's causing the immune system problems because the body is also affected in very direct ways. Because of the fluid shift, we have a higher cranial pressure, so more liquid in the brain. And uh, so this pressure also squeezes the optical nerve um, or it might actually also squeeze the eyeballs. So um, our vision, our acuity changes here in space. So why does our immune system appear to work worse in space? 
researchers in Canada may have the answer. They studied a group of 14 ISS astronauts and found that many immune system genes began acting differently after they arrived on the station. Blood samples were taken before, during, and after missions. They revealed remarkably similar patterns of how genes were acting in the astronauts' white blood cells. White blood cells play a key role in fighting off infections, so changes in how their genes act could have an impact on overall health. The list of genes that are expressed that are, uh, have a reduced expression in space and those genes that are related to immune functions and that coincides with a higher risk of infection that astronauts will encounter while in space. Around 100 immune system genes grew less active in the astronauts' white blood cells soon after they reached space. 29 genes grew more active. Gene activity returned to normal soon after the astronauts returned to Earth. The researchers think the changes caused the immune system to work less effectively in space. One hypothesis is that they're spurred by the weightless environment. Spacecraft are a long way from the next doctor or hospital, so understanding what happens to our immune systems when we leave the fetters of gravity behind to keep astronauts as healthy as possible will be key to planning longer space missions in the future, like those to the Moon, Mars, and beyond.